In this video, I'm going to answer some really cool questions about anatomy as it relates to MS. Don't turn away, because that starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Today, I'm going to answer some really cool questions I was recently asked as it relates to the anatomy of the brain, MRI, and MS. So let's jump in. Ichabod13 asks, Dr. Boster, is there any difference in the white matter or the gray matter lesions caused by MS? Awesome question, Ichabod, and there is a difference. Let's start by describing what white and gray matter is. The gray matter of the brain is found in two locations, in the cortex or the surface of the brain, and then in the deep structures. So when you think about the outside covering of the brain, we call that the cortex, which is Greek for bark, which makes sense because it's on the outside. And that area of the brain is really the part that we think with. It's the computer. It's where we do the processing of information and planning and math, etc. And if you imagine that there's cortex over here on the surface of the brain, and there's cortex over here, and these two areas need to communicate, there has to be some type of wiring system so that they can send messages back and forth. That's where the white matter comes in. All the white matter, which is located deep inside the brain, are literally wires that connect one portion of cortex to another portion of cortex. And the white matter is called white because it's myelinated. It has the myelin that's coating the outside, which allows information to be passed quickly. There's another area of gray matter in their deep structures in the very, very center of the brain. It turns out that MS can affect both the white matter and the gray matter, but it's harder for conventional MRIs to see gray matter lesions. So when you get a standard MRI, you can see the lesions in the white matter, the white spots, but the lesions in the gray matter are much more difficult to pick out. And that's not because they're not there, it's because the MRI technology doesn't allow us to see them very easily. There are ways to see them with very special, non-conventional and research techniques, and we most certainly see them when we do pathology. Now, Gray matter involvement in MS is underappreciated. Gray matter atrophy or shrinkage of the gray matter, particularly the deep gray matter structures, correlates better with long-term neurological disability than anything else. The bottom line is the gray matter matters and the white matter matters. And as we move forward with improving our diagnostics, we're gaining increasing insights into how to measure both of them. Ichabod, that was an awesome question. Thank you for asking it. Jenny Chapman asks, question, is there any research going on regarding the direct blasting of lesions or medication that could dissolve them? Thank you. Jenny, that's a really great question. Now, a lesion is not a collection of infection or a tumor or some foreign structure. The word lesion is a doctor term that refers to a spot that we see on the MRI. If you were to look under the microscope at that spot. It's not a foreign substance that you could blast away. It's not a foreign substance that you could dissolve. It's actually your own brain tissue, which has become inflamed and irritated and damaged. And so you wouldn't want to cut it out. You wouldn't want to blast it away because what you're looking at is part of you. You're looking at your own brain tissue. It's just become all inflamed where inflammatory cells have come in and they've busted up the neurons and they've brought in excessive water. And so you see an area that's easily demarcated on the scan, a spot, which we sometimes refer to as a lesion. So the short answer is we don't want to blast or dissolve them. What we want to do is we want to help them heal. We want to decrease the inflammation as much as possible using our current therapies and things like steroids. Now, in the near future, I do believe that we'll have other ways of helping. Things like remyelinating agents that could help repair the lost myelin and neuroprotective agents that might protect the axons from destruction in the first place. Great question, Jenny. Thanks for asking. And now for some coffee. Hey! 
Doug Tag asks, how important is it to keep track of your lesion location and number? If you have someone that has 100 lesions on their MRI, and a year later they have 101, in many ways they're doing better than someone that has two lesions and a year later has four. And the number of lesions can be misleading. We can kind of uh, become too focused on that. What I think is the most important thing to keep in mind is the change over time, or the delta. So I am most concerned at looking at last year's scan and looking at this year's scan and asking the question, are there any lesions that have gotten bigger? Are there any lesions that have gotten smaller? Are there any lesions that are enhancing? And are there any new lesions? And that's the number that I want to keep in mind. But I would much rather someone focus their attention on taking a DMT and making sure that it's working, on exercising as part of their lifestyle, on not smoking cigarettes, and on eating clean and supplementing vitamin D. I think that these four things are way more important to focus on than keeping a track of the exact number of your spots and the exact location. That's something that I want your neurologist to embrace doing. I hope that helped answer your question. It was a great one. Bridget Graham asks, can you explain what black holes are? You have a very short video that talks briefly about it. By the way, I'm from Dayton, Ohio. Well, hello, Bridget from Dayton, Ohio. When you have naughty autoreactive cells that are in the bloodstream and they cross the blood-brain barrier and gain access to the brain or the spinal cord, they can see parts of your brain as a foreign invader and they attack it using inflammation. And we will see on the MRI that there's a white spot. That white spot actually represents a collection of excessive fluid. And if you looked at it under the microscope, you'd see lots of inflammatory cells. Now, those inflammatory cells, unfortunately, are going to cause brain damage. They're going to literally damage the neurons and the nerves and structures in the brain. And if there's an excessive amount of damage, they will eat away at the brain tissue. When you see a black hole, you're quite literally looking at a hole in the brain. If I use an analogy, imagine um, a city that's under siege uh, in, in a war and there's bombs going off, etc. And when all the dust settles, it was such a severe series of explosions that the city's not there anymore. It's just flat ground. You've removed everything. And that's what we can see in the setting of a black hole is that the tissue is no longer there. Interestingly, the degree of darkness, the, the darker the black hole, the more destruction that we see. And sometimes the black hole is kind of gray looking, which means there's a relative preservation of nerve cells. And sometimes it is jet black, which tells us that there's almost no tissue left. Almost all people that have MS will have some black holes. And I was taught in training that for every 10 white spots, we might see one dark spot. When the number of black holes or the ratio of black holes goes up closer to one to two, I start to become very, very concerned because the number of black holes actually correlates better with long-term disability than the white spots. So when you ask your neurologist to review your MRI and you look for any new or enlarged white spots, the T2 spots, or any enhancing spots, I also want you to ask, are there any new or enlarged black holes? Bridget, awesome question. If you're impacted by MS and want to learn more about MRI, click that video right there. YouTube Analytics thinks that you would love this video listed right there. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Just click that circle with my face on it. Go ahead, click my face. My name's Aaron Boster and thank you for learning about MS with me. Until my next video or my next live stream or the next time I see you in clinic, take care.